What's up, everybody? My name is Godzi, and welcome, at last, to Umineko When They Cry Answers Arc. Yes, finally! Oh my god, I've been meaning to play this for so goddamn long. Like, seriously. The reason why it took so long for me to get to this is, one, because I decided to take a break in between it and Answers Arc, rather, Questions Arc, because, well, I wanted to be able to reread Questions Arc and see if there's anything I missed. Sorry for the random cut, I had to fix something real quick. Anyways, I've been meaning to play this game for a while, and the only reason I never got around to it sooner is because, like I already said, I took a short break between uh, Questions Arc and this because I wanted to reread as much of Questions Arc. Also, welcome to Dog Bark, first one of the series. Let's see how many we can get. I'm not going to have a counter. That's annoying. Uh, I wanted to reread through as much of Questions Arc as I could so I could see if there's anything that I might have missed throughout the game. And, well, I'll say. Hey, that's a piece of paper. I wrote down some things, but I'd like to say I would have started this probably a month ago if it wasn't for the fact that I had pre-recorded all of Kingdom Hearts 3, including the bonus episodes, before I ever made my schedule change to have four series going on at once. And, very clearly, at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, I mentioned the next series would be this, and I wasn't about to, uh, you know, change that decision. I, in hindsight, probably could've, probably should've, but yeah, I would've done this as early as when I finished Deltarune, if I didn't say that. If all I had to do was choose a different series to have this time slot, and we would've already been, like, 10 to 15 episodes into the series... But then, of course, we wouldn't have already, we wouldn't have done things like Portal and My Hero Wants Justice, and I wouldn't be at Corpse Party yet, so, whatever. Either way, it's finally begun. Umaneko When They Cry Answers Arc, or Umaneko no Nakukoro Nichiru, or Umaneko Nocturne of Truths and Illusions. Uh, yes. Finally. Very long intro, I realize, but now it's time for me to get to this piece of paper. To mention everything that I noticed when going back through Questions Arc. And I kind of like sped read it, so I didn't get everything. There might have been some important details that I just accidentally glossed over. But everything that I think was important, I wrote down. So the first thing I wrote is that early in Chapter 1, Krauss says, My father is already dead. Meaning... Uh, well, he said it outside the study with Nanjo and Genji near him. Meaning... They likely knew Kinzo was already dead. Genji and the servants, at the very least, must have already known Kinzo was dead. Nanjo probably almost definitely knew he was dead, too. So, Kraus likely knew that Kinzo was dead, and this was whole. This was all just a farce. Uh, this was all just a farce. Kraus, Genji, and Nanjo going up to the study to get Kinzo down there for dinner, because he, he wasn't alive, or lunch, I think it was at the time. But yeah, Kraus already knew, it was hinted as early as then that Kinzo was already dead. Um, the heads ring and the letters. If Kinzo is already dead, then who has the ring and who wrote the letters? Obviously, probably the, peop the person slash people that kills everybody. It's just something I wrote down. I wrote these down a while ago, but yeah, heads ring and letters, they're a topic of interest. Um, they'd probably have to be the same person. Kraus is, oh, that's part of the same point. The, the people, yeah, it has to be the same person who has the heads ring and the, and who wrote the letters. And again, this makes Kraus suspicious. I don't think, I think Kraus is too obvious to actually be the culprit, but granted, I obviously shouldn't count him out. I feel like the only character I should count out is Batler, and possibly Maria. Um, Natsuhi lied about seeing Kinzo in the first game before the first Twilight victims were discovered, so she was also in on the whole spiel with the servants, Nanjo, and Kraus. So, again, I don't think... Uh, Kraus and Natsuhi 
were intending on killing everybody. I think they were just doing exactly what was said in Chapter 3 or 4 by, I think, either Eva or Rosa, more than likely Eva, that they're trying to hide the fact that Kinzo was dead so that they could file a missing person report, come, well, legally claim him as dead in the coming years and inherit his entire inheritance or whatever all that mumbo-jumbo was. Economics. I don't really know much about that stuff, despite the fact that I'm taking an economics class in school right now. That's fun. Next thing, this was in Chapter 2. Who in the helly fuck is Lunon? They were mentioned once or twice in one scene in Chapter 2, and they were not ever mentioned again. Clearly, they're another servant, and they're probably not on the island, but who are they? Seriously. Something that I noted, like, when Cannon died in Chapter 2, even though Cannon's body went missing in Chapter 2, he's always been killed by a chest wound. Every single game. Game 1, he was stabbed in the chest by one of the stakes. Game 2, stabbed in the chest by one of the stakes. Game 3, it wasn't the exact same type of wound. He was likely shot, but nonetheless, in the chest. And in Game 4, he was shot by the Chester's Golden Arrow in the chest and fell down the well and quote-unquote went missing, even though he, his body was at the bottom of the well more than likely. It was mentioned, Batwar can't see down the well. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know if this means something like Cannon was already dead at the beginning of every game, which wouldn't make sense. Especially given what Batwar said towards the end of Chapter 4, with Cannon being a name that's passed down similar to Kinzo. It doesn't make sense. Cannon's more than likely alive. But it's possible that Cannon is either the culprit in every case, or a accomplice in every case, and when he's killed off, he's always stabbed in the chest. Uh... Maria recognizes Beatrice. I wrote this down, it's probably not important, but Maria always seems to recognize Beatrice when she shows up. It's probably just some magic stuff, but still, Maria recognizes Beatrice. Uh, the bank pin was written by the culprit as information to their accomplice. This is in chapter 3 now. Uh, yeah, I didn't write down too much. I went through multiple chapters multiple times. Just to make sure, but I didn't really get much the first time through. So yeah. I think Nanjo or someone else like that was an accomplice in every game. And in Chapter 3, that was the only time where we actually found the bank pen. I think the bank pen was probably written down somewhere where Nanjo could find it in every single game. And that was just written to Nanjo. So, Nanjo could leave. Um, someone in Chapter 1 was almost definitely disguised. I really think it's stupid. Like, it's such a fucking logical contradiction with Chapter 1 regarding Cannon's death, the uh, second Twilight murders, and the bodies in the, f in the garden shed. Because it was mentioned, nobody faked their death. Cannon wasn't killed. Cannon didn't kill himself. So... Cannon is someone else, disguised as someone else, and whoever was portrayed as Cannon was already dead. Something like that. It's really, it's weird. I don't know what it could be. So, I'm assuming someone had to be disguised in Chapter 1. The only thing that I don't really understand too much is Chapter 2's chapel. Because seriously, I feel like every possible uh, option was taken out there. I don't know. I really don't. The red has to be worked... Okay, this is something I already said. The red has to be able to be worked around. Because in Chapter 1, it was mentioned that no one faked their death, but Cannon was neither killed nor did he kill himself, meaning he could only have faked his death. Unless that wasn't Cannon, there's gotta be some wordplay to the red. Um, the Sakutaro doll only had one copy, but I think Rosa never destroyed it. I'm almost certain Angie had to have found a Sakutaro doll in Kawabata's place in Chapter 4. There's no, there's really no doubt in my mind that that's what happened. 
But the problem with that is Rosa destroyed it, which, of course, that could just be magic stuff or Maria's uh, shoddy memory or something like that. But either way, there, it, there was one copy of the Sakutaro doll, as mentioned, unless it was a different doll that just looks like... Just, just looks similar to Sakutaro. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Rosa must have known Ka Kawabata in some way, though, if this isn't a different doll and is, in fact, the same Sakutaro doll that was supposed to be destroyed. Everything in Chapter 4 was faked, and only the cousins were out of the loop, but I feel like Jessica and Maria were eventually included. And George. I guess I forgot to write George. Chapter 4, that had to all be, like, an inclusive thing. It had to all be portrayed as something like a prank or something, or a game. And that's the only way it would make any logical sense, because there are so many discrepancies. As for some connections I made... Okay, this, this is obvious. This is something that we already knew. The stakes are meant to represent the seven stakes, obviously. So, Lucifer, Belfajor, Asmodeus, all of them, they're meant to actually represent their respective stakes. But as for the Chiester sisters, this took me a minute until I read the tips for chapter one. The Chiesters are meant to represent the guns. I remember with 45 in, specific, in particular, uh, the 45 gun, I, I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was a 45 caliber pistol or something like that. No, it was 45 sawed off or something like that used in chapter 1 mentioned in the tips. So, yeah, I I looked it up. 410 is a type of gun, double O is a type of gun, and even 556 was a type of gun. So, yeah, there's a connection between the Chesters and the guns, which would explain why some gunshot wounds are different from each other. I think there's a shotgun. There's probably a shotgun somewhere. And then there's a different gun that is just one straight shot, already a second dog bark. Something like a pistol or something that works like a pistol. And a sawed-off is a type of shotgun, I believe. And that's the thing Natsuhi he had in Chapter 1, I'm pretty sure. And she was also shot in the head. But it's clearly not a shotgun spread unless only one bullet happened to hit her in the forehead with a shotgun. But then there would be other bullets everywhere. So, yeah, that one uh, bullet had to have just gone... It had to be a different gun, is what I'm assuming. I don't remember if there was red contradicting that, but that's what my theory is regarding Natsuhi's death in Chapter 1. Now, it's very clear that characters like Genji and Ronove have a connection. Obviously, as well as Kinzo and the Goldsmith, which Kinzo and Goldsmith are the same person, even portrayed through the game. Same with Maria and all caps Maria. But other characters seem to have some other connections, like Kumasawa and Virgilia. I think that's because Kumasawa was the person who took care of the Beat of the real life Beatrice, who grew up in the Kuadorian that was mentioned in Chapter Three. Then there's. I wrote Gota and Goat just as a joke, but at the same time, it might not be a joke. Because in Chapter 4, specifically, Virgilia was using goats to chase after Kyrie, uh, Cannon, Shannon, Nanjo, and Kraus. And if we already use this aforementioned connection between Kumasawa and Virgilia, Gota and Kumasawa were supposedly together the whole time in Chapter 4, Meaning, Gota and the goats would have to have some sort of connection. Remember, I remember there was some sort of backstory to one of the goats, probably just for some comic humor, but I think there might be some underlying reason to it. I think that's Gota's backstory, or something like that. I don't remember exactly what that said. It was something about a little sister. I don't remember. Um, so yeah, this would mean there has to be some connection between Beatrice and another character. I made a connection between Rosa and the Eva Beatrice, rather than Eva and the Eva Beatrice, because ugh, Rosa was referred to on multiple occasions as the Black Witch, and Eva Beatrice was always referred to as the Black Witch, 
meaning there's probably some connection there. I feel like uh, Eva Beatrice being a witch version of young Eva is deception. I think it's all just a deception. I think the actuality is that Rosa and Eva Beatrice are the same sort of entity, or there's some connection between them, a la Ronova and Genji. On the other hand, though, I think Eva does have a, of a, have a connection to Gap, and this is a weak connection, because there's really no evidence for this, but in Chapter 4, when Eva was fighting George, Gap, her whole thing is kicking, and Eva's been shown on multiple occasions to be very good at martial arts and the likes, and she kicks. That's my only evidence for that, but there's that connection. On average, I found that Nanjo always survives ridiculously long. He was the 7th Twilight in the 1st and 2nd games, ninth in the 3rd, and what's blah blah blah, kind of the 6th in the 4th game. Meaning, I think Nanjo is an accomplice. He survives very late into every game to the point where he's, like, considered expendable, but useful by the real culprit. I went through every game to see which characters could conceivably kill in each instance. Kinzo had no opportunities ever. Kraus had opportunities in the first game if we have, if we have to work around the red. And in the fourth. In fact, everybody in the fourth game except for Kinzo, Batwer, and Maria had the opportunity to kill everyone if you really just assume one of these characters is quote-unquote Kinzo. Uh, in the first game, everyone in the first Twilight had the opportunity to kill. Uh, meaning Kraus, Rudolph, Rosa, Kyrie, and Goda. In fact, it'd probably be faster to say in the first game, Kinzo cannot kill, Nanjo cannot kill, Natsuhi cannot kill, Jessica, George, Battler, Maria, Genji, and Kumasawa cannot kill. I know I'm going on for a while, I'm going on for a long time, but we're getting there. Uh, in the second game, this was a lot more odd. It'd be faster to say who has opportunities to kill, being Nanjo, Rosa... George, Shannon, Cannon, and Goda. And then in Chapter 3, um, George, Genji, Shannon, Cannon, Goda, and Kumasawa. The only characters who really have the opportunity to kill in every game are Shannon, Cannon, and Goda. Because it was never said in Red that e any of them have not killed... I think one of those three is probably the common culprit among all four games. As for accomplices, Nanjo and whichever two of the three between Shannon Cannon and Goda is not the true culprit. Um, and we have more to talk about. I don't think anyone's ever been killed by a trap, so we'll just throw that out there. The Tenth Twilight is almost definitely a bomb. Hence, the limited range and why Eva survived Game 3. Shannon and Cannon, as a... In general, are really weird characters. Cannon's body disappears twice, and there's always some strange oddities surrounding Shannon and Cannon's deaths. Because in the first game, Shannon's body is not viewable by anybody. Like, you just... The only characters who supposedly saw it were Canon, Nanjo, Eva, and Hideyoshi. Uh, and Canon in the first game, it's unknown whether... Like, it's apparently impossible for him to have been killed, it's apparently impossible for him to have killed himself, and it's apparently impossible for him to have faked his death. Meaning he didn't... Like, the only thing that would make sense is that he didn't fake his death, except he was portrayed to have died. So, that's the weird part. In the second game, Cannon's body just goes completely missing, and Shannon's body, when we find it, does not have a uh, stake in it. It's, like, next to her head or something, or on the ground. It, all I know is that it wasn't in her head. In the third game, those two, like, Shannon was the first body in the closed room loop, and Cannon was the last one, which seems odd, 
that the first one found would be Shannon and the last one would be Cannon. You'd think it'd all go up to Kinzo, but that's not necess That's not true, then. it Cannon was the last one found. Um, and then in the fourth game, Shannon... There's not really oddities surrounding her death in the fourth game, but Cannon's body was never found, and that's really the only problem there. Um, and she never goes to Fukuin House, yet she goes to Kumasawa's sons. You'd think Fukuin House should be more important, since it had direct connections to, uh, Rokanjima. You'd think it'd be more important, but Angie never decides to go there, meaning there's probably something she knows that we don't. Unless it was a secret that Fukuin House was connected to Rokanjima, in which case, then obviously she wouldn't have gone there. So overall, the most suspicious characters are Nanjo, because he would likely be an accomplice in all cases, Kraus, because he lied about Kinzo, Eva, in general, is just a suspicious character, as is Rosa, Natsuhi, for the same reason as Kraus, Jessica and George are just oddities that have the opportunity to kill in many circumstances, uh, Genji is, again, an oddity who has the opportunity to kill in every instance except for the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th Twilights of the first game. And, like, likely the 5th, also. Uh, Shannon, Cannon, and Goda, as aforementioned. So, yeah, finally, we're, like, 25 minutes into this. Let's finally start the game. Oh, boy. So, we have four more chapters or episodes, I guess I should mention. Alright, finally it's time to begin this story. I'll probably go for an hour in 20 minutes for this one, just so I have an hour of content, because I just kind of talked for 25 minutes. Episode 5, End of the Golden Witch. Big doubt that it's her end. <laughs> Good morning. Please enjoy this new game by a new game master at your leisure. However, the game has already reached a climax. The Cobra has been cornered, and there's nothing left to do but await the final checkmate. Hmm. But for that very reason, there must be something for you to spot, looking down on it from afar. The difficulty is fairly easy. What could possibly deceive you after all this time? It's a good question, uh, Beatrice narrator person, whichever one. Oh boy. This story is very obviously fictional and fantastic in nature. Any resemblance to existing individuals, organizations, locations, or incidents is completely coincidental. Oh boy. I hear the waves crashing. I forgot to turn off the voices. So, let's do that, because I always do that. Uh, how- uh, <laughs> Alright. Uh, okay. It just restarts if you do that. Alright. Ah, yes, system. Yes, we can already see the characters. And can we already see these guys, too? Oh, shit, we can. That one is here, too. Oh. You already have, like, new information and stuff. Ushiromiya Battler. The man designated to be Beato's opponent in the first four games. In the fifth game, he is p displeased that Lambda Delta has taken over as Game Master, so he does not participate as a player. Interesting. Uh, then in that case, Lambda Delta, in the place of Beato, who stepped down from the position of Game Master in the fourth game, Lambda Delta serves as the new Game Master in the fifth game. Therefore, it is expected that, while the fifth game may be quite similar to the previous ones, there will be differences. She hates boredom as much as Burncastle, and depending on the situation, she may become either an enemy or an ally to Beato or Burn. Interesting. Uh, the Witch of Miracles, is there anything- Okay, she participates as a player in opposition to Beato. Ah. However, from the very beginning, her aim has been to deny the illusion of the Witch. Her only goal is to crush Beato and her world as a way to stave off boredom. Though she does deny the illusion of the Witch, she is no ally of Battlers. Is there anything more interesting with these characters? Dun, 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 dun. In the fifth game, she clashes with Burncastle, who denies this illusion. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing more than a piece. I feel like I missed information somewhere. Now retired. Rona Bay. Gap. 
The Seven Sisters of Purgatory. Okay, let's, let's just read. Isn't it obvious? It's only fun to kill her and see your face twist in pain. Why else? <laughs> Been a while since we've had that. Look, look, don't turn your eyes away. Look at it. Look, look, look. It's magic. It's furniture. Fuck yeah. Time. Now I can actually say that things are furniture in context. How long have I been saying that different cannons in video games are furniture? No matter how much you try to deny me in magic. Look, 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 look! These are already pretty different facial expressions than what I remember. <laughs> Sorry, Battler. It was pretty fun. Sure, I just did what teacher told me, but look how great it turned out. Apparently, if you start out all hostile and needlessly brutal, then turning competent and soft at just the right moment, you can spark a huge bump on your affection meter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take a while for me to get better at that kind, at the voice acting in this game. I guess that was just like a series of flashbacks, right? From all the times Beatrice is fit as a fooled battler. That lonely tone was the desolate sound of the wind blowing by. The glittering rose petals on these bushes were all golden. The cloud of gold butterflies that had once danced through this golden rose garden like fluttering rose petals was no longer anywhere to be seen. The master of the Golden Land is the Golden Witch, Beatrice. She might be called inhumane and cruel, arrogant and outrageous, or perhaps naive and simple. That laugh of hers, which lost its grace more and more the longer it continued, could no longer be heard. The Golden Witch, Beatrice, sat like a doll, resting in a deck chair adorned as beautifully as the Golden Rose Garden itself. Huh. She wasn't relaxing there. Her eyes were empty. She didn't respond to any questions. Even so, she was not permitted to sleep. Beatrice sat like a doll. Odd. Hello. Her hair was down, and Virgilia was carefully tending to it with a comb. The usual Beato would surely have spent this time complaining about this and that regarding her hairstyle. <laughs> she is... Just a generic old teenage girl, isn't she? <laughs> if you really think about it. However, she made no response, showed no reaction. So it really only looked like Virgilia was combing the golden hair of a large doll. Hmm. There was a table alongside them. With a chessboard, cause of course. <laughs> On it sat a chessboard, along with a jumble of black and white pieces locked in a closely fought battle I did not mean to write quick. However, this setup looks somehow different from normal chess. Maybe the game was similar, though not identical. And on the other side, sitting back in his chair as he contemplated his next move, was a young man. The main character. No, perhaps it wasn't his next move he contemplated. Every once in a while, he would change the positions of the pieces, reconsidering the situation after every change. Maybe he was just reconstructing previous games, trying to discover the thought process behind the moves that had been made. In the past, Kinzo, the Ushiromiya family head, once said that learning chessboard arrangements was like taking a journey through the thoughts of the old masters. Chess and old masters, how Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> Ushiromiya Battler was on a journey, a search for the thought process that had led the Golden Witch to create this arrangement and make these moves. Battler took a black piece that should have been moved forward and returned it to its original place, sighing deeply. Batwer's pieces were white. However, on this chessboard, the black encampment was on Batwer's side. Hmm. He was reconstructing that arrangement, trying to play Beato's role. The more I do this, the less I understand your moves. Even Batwer didn't expect that Beato would respond to that statement. Or rather, he was pretending to talk to himself, thinking there might still be some chance of her responding. Hmm. Oh, she is very dead inside. 
Me too. Beto's eyes reflected nothing, and her mouth told nothing. Mm. After begging him to kill her, oh yeah, that's right, she did do that. The Golden Witch had become a corpse that had given up on life. She wasn't sleeping. She couldn't step down from this game and was therefore forbidden sleep. So those words must have reached her ears. However, they probably hadn't reached her heart. The Golden Witch would not sneer at Battler's moves, nor would she praise them or belittle them. By now, Beatrice was nothing- Did I just pronounce it Beatrice? <laughs> Beatrice was nothing more than a living doll. Even so, she would glance at him every once in a while. It would be an empty glance, but a glance nonetheless. Sometimes she would seem to make some sort of gesture, or even move her lips. However, her movements never managed to communicate anything to Battler. How did you decide on this move in this situation? I don't get it at all. I don't understand your moves. <laughs> Welcome back to Dotland. Population, Beatrice so far, and already Virgilia. <laughs> Beato? Battler Coot. I forgot, we use honorifics in this game. Battler is talking to you? <laughs> don't care. Me want to summon Minware! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Say something. Giggle or guffaw or something. Even use that shrill laugh of yours if you want. That'd be out of nowhere. Can you believe it? That shrill laugh of Beato's will never be heard again. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> However, even if she couldn't answer, his voice surely reached her. That was what Batwer believed as he said these words. So he said it again. How did you decide on this move in this situation? I don't get it at all. I don't understand your moves. <laughs> so, you don't understand what this child is thinking? Virgilia answered in her disciple's stead. Up to this point, she had done her best to avoid speaking for Beato. After all, there was a chance that Beato would respond in some way, and Virgilia didn't want to be the one to steal that chance. So Batwer was going to have to bear with this silence, until Beato herself answered. Virgilia could no longer bear to watch Battler like this. Besides, Battler also wanted to hear what Virgilia had to say. He believed that conversation would reach Beato's heart. Yep. I don't have a clue. The more I try standing in Beato's shoes and moving the pieces like this, the less I understand. A serial- oh. A serial murder following an epitaph. With that as a victory condition, I tried reconstructing the games from the witch's side. But I never ended up making the moves Beato did. In those games, I could find several incomprehensible moves that clearly worked against that victory condition. I don't get it at all. It's like she's trying to help you win or something. This journey through her thoughts is just too rugged. Even so, you won't give up, will you? I won't. I promised. Kill me. Let me die. Hmm. I promise to let her die peacefully. And I'm the only one who can do it. Beato's right ankle was bound with a heavy, cold, steel shackle. It wasn't tied to anything, so it didn't restrict her movement. However, it symbolized restriction. It was a visualization of the bonds that prevented her from leaving the game until she either won or lost. And the shackle was probably hurting her. The mercilessly cold shackle tormented her over and over inside her waking dream. So there was never any sign of relief in her empty expression. Her eyelids would sometimes tremble like she was having a nightmare. And every once in a while, she would let out a pained gasp. Mm. Unless I win, Beata will never be released from the curse that prevents her from sleeping peacefully. Are you sure you want to be doing this? It seems the fifth game has already started. <laughs> Not interested. Why should I take part in any game unless Beata is my opponent? If that's the only alternative then it's much better use of my time to reconstruct previous games while taking a journey in search of Beato's thought process. Huh. 
Oh great, you already, and that's already a different expression. I'll be the next Game Master. Any objections? You've got none, right? And you already have different expressions too, holy shit. I've got nothing but objections. Beto conceded this fight and is unconscious. Isn't this a loss by default and game over for her? I'll admit a lot's happened to Beto, and she's basically been KO'd for now. But that doesn't mean she's lost the will to fight. That's why I'm acting as her assistant. Get it? Beto was lying down on a deck chair, almost as though she was sleeping. Hold on. Uh, are there other things that I can do? Because I feel like there's... I can... No, I, I can't change how fast the text goes then. All right. However, she wasn't sleeping, and she wasn't awake either. She was nothing more than a living doll that had given up on victory, who had asked Batwer to perform her last rites, and who had surrendered everything. Of course, if everyone just sat around, the next game, the fifth game, would never be made ready. So Lambda Delta had succeeded Beato as the next Game Master and announced that she'd prepare the next game. Quit messing around. This is a game between me and Beato. I don't know who you two are, but I'm not gonna let you carry on without us. No one asked for your opinion. Thanks, Arxene. <laughs> what do you do, Burn? Accept my challenge or not? Sure. Go ahead and inherit her role. The hell? Quit messing around. I don't know who you people are, but I'm not gonna let you ignore Beato and me and just carry on by yourselves. Hey, take it easy, kid. <laughs> okay, sure, a new player means you'll face new kinds of moves. I'm sure you'll see a lot of stuff that confuses you, but even that might lead to some big hints, get it? Who cares? Quit saying whatever you want and deciding everything on your own. Beto's game has repeated four times, and you still don't understand anything, right? In that case, I expect that swapping out opponents might lead to some huge hints. That's none of your business. This is our game. Beto prepared it, and she designated me to be her opponent. I don't know what hole you two crept out of, but I don't want you screwing things up. In that case, wake Beto up and make her get the next game ready. Can you? B Beto won't be getting up for a while. That's also a new expression. I guess there are quite a lot. Anyway, we don't even need to have another game. The four games she's already laid out are more than enough. And even if we do have some fifth game, there's no reason it shouldn't just be a puzzle Beato lays out and I take on. There's absolutely no reason for you two to butt in. Batwer couldn't hide his irritation at the two witches called Lambda Delta and Burncastle, who had shown up well after the game's start and who were now trying to take charge on their own. It looked like these witches were of an even higher rank than Beato. So high, in fact, that even Beato's teacher, Virgilia, couldn't even come close. Batwer had the feeling he'd seen these two several times before. However, this was the first time he'd known their names and spoken to them directly. Really? Interesting. You can't get the next game ready without waking Beato. That's why I'll prepare the next game. We aren't so patient that we're willing to wait forever for Beato to regain consciousness. Right, Burn? I don't like boredom. It really ticks me off. We really don't give a damn whether you're bored or not. Come on now. We have everything to this perfect Lambda Delta, okay? I'll take over as the Game Master. Don't worry. I won't play too much with absolute perfection. Just like Beato, I'll set up plenty of incomprehensible fakes, clues, and bonus hints. I'll make this game a huge hint that'll help you understand Beato's world even better, okay? Letting my voiceless emotions explode, I slammed the table hard. The two witches didn't flinch at all. One grinned, the other looked indifferent, as though nothing had happened. Wonder which is which? The two of them just stared at me silently. That is a dust particle in front of me, as though they were reproaching me. What's this? Not satisfied? Are you saying you'll step down from my fifth game? Isn't that a loss by default? Butler won't step down. Of course, he'll participate in the fifth game. 
Don't just decide that yourself. I'm not gonna play along with you two. I don't give a shit. Hmm. Then it really is a loss by default, right? The witch side wins this game. Is it really okay to end this with the humans surrendering? If you step down, the game will end with your loss by default, to get it? If you want to guarantee that your lonely sister always meets with miserable circumstances in an endless number of worlds, that option is indeed open to you. Oh yeah, and she got fucking destroyed at the end of Chapter 4, didn't she? That's not good. When Burncastle mentioned Angie, Bower's expression changed instantly. You bastard. Don't you dare talk about Angie so lightly. Because you have an ally in me, Burncastle, the Witch of Miracles, there exists the possibility of a miracle in which Angie's family comes home to her. Well, if you do throw that chance away and guarantee that Angie's endless futures all end in sorrow, that might be pretty interesting too. I vaguely understood what she was saying. Until I went in Beato's game, I'll remain trapped in this bizarre world. And if I abandon that victory, then most certainly, my parents and I will never return to Angie. For Angie's sake, even though I know that the witches are toying with me, I must keep on fighting. <clears throat> Damn it. What's wrong? You look unsatisfied. Have you already forgotten how angry you were when your sister was turned to mincemeat? You know, that spectacle where she was torn to bits, ripped to pieces by countless red-hot pliers. You'd better watch more closely next time, okay? Uh... Burncastle pointed the palm of her right hand upwards. As she did, a pale light gathered there, and some kind of blue glowing crystal appeared there. A scene was reflected on its sharp surface, but it wasn't the scene that surrounded them now. If you look deep into that crystal, that fragment, then you would probably learn what was reflected on there. Oh! Already blood. <laughs> Thank you. If you stared at it, then you'd surely see the end Angie finally reached, after waiting 12 years and giving up everything for the sake of her beloved brother. The scene of her death throes, as her entire body was torn to bits while she still lived. Damn you! Without thinking, he grabbed at her collar, but as soon as he touched that which made which made up her form, it disappeared like foam on the waves. Then, as naturally as though she'd been there from the beginning, Burncastle was leaning against a distant wall. <laughs> That's a different face as well. If you step down from the game, this will become not just a fragment, but a definite reality. I won't be the one to create that future. You'll do it yourself. So decide, okay? Figure out what you want to do with your beloved little sister's future. Batwar's fist shook with anger, but even if he swung them down, he wouldn't be able to hit Burncastle. The switch was like a phantom, or a cat, who wouldn't even let someone pet her if she didn't wish for it. And she was telling the truth. For Angie's sake, I can't step down from this fight. Even if those unpleasant witches hijack the game board. <laughs> That's just like you, Burn. You're even heartless when you threaten people. That's how it is, Battler. You aren't allowed to step down from the game board. You and Beato are nothing more than pieces on the board that exist to distract us from our boredom. Even your incomprehensible anger and irritation make for a wonderful treat to satisfy us. Well, what you're doing now only makes for a cheap snack, though. Like those curry-flavored potato wafers that sell for 30 yen a pair. <laughs> ah, and they're both fucking crazy laughing. Are these, like, higher-definition sprites? They seem higher def than I remember. <laughs> you damn witches. <laughs> Fight for Angie's sake, okay? And for Beato's too, right? In a way that was admonishing, or perhaps babying, like the headache you get after eating something too sweet, Burncastle tormented Battler and smiled. By now, the host of this tea party, Beata, was absent. The guest witches were already making themselves at home. What do you do, Ushiromiya Battler? Will you surrender to fate? <laughs> Just step down! You've had enough of being toyed with as a witch's piece, right? <laughs> it sure is tough being one of Burns' pieces. I'm sure she'll use you and throw you away just like she did with Angie. <laughs> I'm 
not giving you the option of stepping down. Keep fighting for the sake of your sister's future. I'm your ally. Until you win, I'll support you so you can reach that future. I don't trust you, though! For all eternity, until I get bored. <laughs> and there they both go, laughing again. I can't let her provocation and... What the fuck is that word? Cajolery rile me up. These witches know I get mad easily, and they're trying to take advantage of that. Battler withstood it all and finally relaxed his clenched fists. If you want to start this fifth game of yours, go ahead and do it. Do whatever you want. Yes, I will do whatever I want. Do you have two fangs now? I thought you only had one. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Even though Batwer acknowledged this fifth game, he turned his back on them. Much to Lambda Delta's surprise. If you're gonna be Beato Substitute, then I'm sure that Burncastle witch over there can stand, f stand in for me if she wants. Not a bad idea. Better than a loss by default. What the heck? Are you just gonna ignore this episode 5 that I put so much effort into making? Rude. Rude! <laughs> Butler says he's going to take a break for a while. Until he comes back, I'll be his substitute. How's that sound, Battler? You do that. Burncastle and Lambda Delta have so many, like, smug faces, it's hilarious. What's wrong, Lambda? So you refuse to play if it's against me instead of that fool Battler? <laughs> of course not. I'm glad I get to play with you, Burn. Come on, let's play, let's play! Let's play together in Lambda Delta Super Hyper and Cute Episode 5. Christ, you have not changed. This technically is a world Beto created. You aren't going to ruin the atmosphere of the story, are you? <laughs> Don't worry about that. I'm really good at reading between the lines for that sort of stuff. I made sure to use a Beto-ish atmosphere to, to <laughs> make a tale that's even more interesting. Batware, make sure you come back as soon as your break's over, okay? It'd be a shame to miss this. I've set up plenty of bonus hints that'll get you closer to Beato's secrets. Or at least that's what it'll make- Or at least that's what it'll look like when it's actually filled with misdirection that makes stuff more and more confusing. Wait, hey, Batware! Why aren't you listening when a witch is talking? <laughs> Without answering, Batware disappeared into the darkness. Can he also teleport? After shrugging and cackling, the witches immediately started playing with the game board they had stolen from Beato. Like a couple of six-year-olds playing Monopoly. Oh boy. And back here, of course. Ah yes, this music! The music in this game seriously is fucking incredible and I'm glad to hear it again, it pleases my eardrums. Can those witches really understand Beato's game? Since they're using the same game board, they cannot do anything that this child cannot do. However, they can do things that this child wouldn't do. <laughs> what do you mean, things she wouldn't do? <laughs> the materials of chess exist so that you can play chess. You cannot use them to play cards. However, when it comes to throwing chess pieces at your opponent and scribbling on the board, such things are not impossible to do. However, that would be blasphemy against the game of chess, so people choose not to do that. Hmm. I guess that's one way of making it a metaphor. That definitely wouldn't be chess anymore. Beato's eyes seem to cloud slightly with sadness. Damn them. This game's between me and Beato. I won't let anyone else defile it. Oh yeah, here he is. At that time, gold butterflies gathered and Ronave appeared, holding a tea set with black tea. Would you like some more tea? If you wouldn't mind. Certainly. So, how goes this journey of yours in search of the lady's thoughts? I don't have a clue, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> However, are you sure about this? Is it truly alright for you to relax here? You mean that game those witches just started all by themselves? Indeed. Just now, when I went to serve them some tea, the murders of the first Twilight had already taken place, and it seemed as though the next murder would occur shortly. Okay then. When Beato and I were playing, the game would be paused whenever someone left their seats. 
However, those witches wouldn't pause that game just because I wasn't around. Hmm. Ronave, did you see their game? Just a part of it. How was it? Ronave lifted the pot high with an elegant gesture as he poured the black tea. After finishing that, he finally spoke. He gave us his impressions of it. It did not have love. What do you mean, love? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a different expression. My apologies. These new expressions make everyone look less stiff, you know? I guess that's one complaint I had about the sprites in Questions Arc. They were so stiff, generally. Like, sometimes they would move their arms around and stuff, but their heads would generally stay in the same place. That is how a woman might put it. As a man, one might call it dishonorable. Hmm. I understood what those words meant. When I met Virgilia's eyes, she shook her head slightly and stared at the floor. I believe- wait, I believe it resembles Milady's games greatly on the surface. However, its foundation is quite different. Does it go against the rules of Beato's game? No, it does not. Lambda Delta actually does understand the rules of Milady's game very well. However... However... Batwer stood up. There was no need to make Ronove say anymore. Butler. Sorry, Ronove. <laughs> I know you went to all the trouble of pouring this for me, but tea isn't what I need. So you will go after all? Yeah. We don't need any outsiders in our game. These guys weren't even here in the beginning. Because I've been loafing about, crazier and crazier witches have been introduced. That is very true. Well, Virgilia's, like, kind. But those two are fucking bonkers. And now they've hijacked this game between me and Beatrice. I've gotta take it back. Right now, I'm supposed to be the one taking care of Beato's game board. That means I can't just sit around here. Thank you. I wanted to let this child hear those words. I'm sure she hears them. Milady is simply unable to answer. Why would she be unable to? Like, she can still talk, right? Beato lay there silently, like a living doll with dull eyes. The game board she had created herself had been hijacked by incomprehensible people, and was being turned into a mess. If I was designated to be her opponent, then Beato must have created this game for me. I've got to take it back. Wait here. I'll go and take it back. Dots again? Of course, Beato didn't respond in any way. That's right. If she can't respond, then I have to protect it in her place. I'll be right back. Virgilia, Ronove, I'm counting on you two to look after this golden sweeping beauty. Okay, just flirt with your opponent. <laughs> yes, leave it to us. See you later, Battler. And please, in the game without this child, try to find some parts of her. If you can. Then even if this child is absent, it will mean you have fought with her. You're right. Ah, It's all useless. There it is. What am I doing? Let's go. And let's take it back. Sorry to keep you waiting, witches. My break is over. When he faced the jet black heavens and yelled thus, the whole world shattered as though it were made out of thin glass. Shatter. Yes. Yeah. Fucking called it. Then, as though it had been that way since the beginning, it transformed into that smoking room where Batwer had fought Beato so many times, and which the two witches had now hijacked. What do you think you're doing? You're only coming back now? It's way too late. Not only has the game reached the second day, it's already at the finale, get it? Why'd you go so quick? You never showed up, so I just advanced things on my own. Yeah, like you even waited for me in the first place. Burn was way more skillful and thrilling than you were, right? Shut up. I'm the player. You substitute witches can just take a step back now. Well, I don't really mind if you just join in starting now, but there's probably no need for you anymore. Seriously. After all, we're already at the climax. After this, Burn will probably corner me and win. What the hell? Nothing wrong with that, is there? Why don't we let him watch the final endgame? Of course! Come on over, Ushiromiya Batwer! 
It's almost completely over, but here's the cute and elegant game I made. Episode 5, End of the Golden Witch. Huh. I thought I'd go for an hour, but oh. Oh, really? What is this? Oh, holy shit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, huh, that's interesting. But you know what? I'm going to end this episode here because it's shattered. And I know I said I would go for a while, but I feel like that's a pretty decent place to end for this first episode. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this first episode of Umaneko Answers Arc. I'm hyped to get back to this in two days. I'm going to be recording it like I record all my other series. So, yeah, it's not going to be daily like it was with Questions Arc every other day instead, but that's still fine. It's going to be a long and joyful ride and probably really, really, really long. <laughs> not just the aforementioned long fucking put some varies in front of that. Either way, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, be sure to press the like button. And if you didn't like it, fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. Excuse me. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!